This piece of art was done by Hungarian artist Robert Barony. It was painted in either 1927 or 1928. The title of it is Sleeping Lady with Black Vase. It is a painting of Robert Barony's wife. The actual date of the painting is unclear, but he definitely painted it when he was in Budapest just after World War I. The last time the painting had been seen in public was in 1928, where it was displayed in the Ernst Museum in Hungary. After that, it was sold. Decades later, it was sold at a St. Vincent de Paul auction, and it was sold for 40 bucks. An art collector named Michael Hempstead purchased it. Hempstead knew it was a barony, and at that time, baronies were selling for about $400. He was able to get 400 bucks for it from an antique shop in California. Later, they resold it for $500 to an art director from Sony Pictures. Then, in the year 2009, on Christmas Eve, an art historian in Hungary named Jergali Barki was watching Stuart Little with his three-year-old daughter, and he noticed this painting in the background. Now, the value of the painting had gone up a lot over the years. In fact, all of Barony's work had gone up significantly in value, and so Barky wanted to find out where it was. Barky had only seen a black and white photo of this painting in a textbook, so he knew that it probably wasn't a print or a copy because it wasn't that well known of a painting and no one would have had access to it to make a copy. So Barky is determined to find this. He writes 50 letters to everybody he can find at Sony, just begging for someone to have some idea of what happened to this after production on Stuart Little wrapped over a decade earlier. He then comes across the art director who says, hey, I've got it and it's in my house. I took it home after production. I've got it above my fireplace. If you want to see it, you got to come to my house. I live in Washington, D.C. So Barky gets on a plane and flies all the way over to Washington, D.C., meets the gentleman in the park, examines the painting, and is pretty sure it's authentic. He then goes over to a hot dog vendor and asks for a screwdriver so he can take it out of the frame. And at that point, he is sure this is it. This is the barony painting. The painting ends up selling in Hungary a few years later for $285,000. Such an amazing story about such a cute little film. Uh, this is E.B. White. This is the writer of Stuart Little. He wrote it in 1945. It was his first book. It was an enormous hit. He went on to do several other greats, including Charlotte's Web. E.B. White accomplished a lot during his career. In 1963, he received the Presidential Medal Medal of Freedom. In 1978, he received a special Pulitzer Prize. In 1973, he was part of an Oscar-nominated short film called The Family That Dwelt Apart. He did the narration for it. E.B. White said that the story of Stuart Little came to him in a dream. It was a dream he had about a tiny boy who acted like a rat. And he said from that idea, he turned it into Stuart Little. Now, the 1999 film was not the first production of Stuart Little. In 1966, there was a television production called The World of Stuart Little that was narrated by Johnny Carson. Take a look at this behind the scenes photo. Look closely at the little car that they're filming. That's it. That's that car. Uh, the way they shot this was very low tech. You had real human actors, and then you had basically like a little doll of Stuart Little. And this doll was stationary. It wasn't, it didn't move. It wasn't stop motion. This film was a gem. I love Michael J. Fox doing the voice of Stuart Little. He's so perfect in it. And it was at a time where I feel like we all needed more Michael J. Fox in our lives. In 2002, they made Stuart Little 2. Then in 2005, they released Stuart Little 3, Call of the Wild. Now this was a traditionally animated feature. So it it looked very different, but you had a lot of the same actors returning. There also is a Stuart Little 3 that is unrelated that was made for PlayStation 2. In this game, you go around and take pictures of the city, and it has a whole little narrative story. Oh dear, not again. Oh no! Hey Stuart, are you okay? I think so, George. But there's a problem. Oh no, the photo album for my school project, it's ruined. I'm so sorry, George. Sheesh! Look, bats fly, mice don't. When are you gonna learn? It's okay, Stuart. 
I just have to take them all again. The animated Stuart Little 3 movie was a jumping off point for an animated series, which continued on HBO for a few years. Stuart Little is referenced in a season 17 episode of The Simpsons. In it, they're going through Homer's school career, and Marge mentions that he did several book reports, all on Stuart Little. Hey, listen, could you do me a favor? Go ahead and be like Fonzie and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. This is pretty cool. Radio Shack had a Stuart Little remote control car. Rushes on to go see the movie Stuart Little, only in theaters. Oh. <laughs> oh. And to get behind the wheel of outrageous remote controlled cars, only at Radio Shack. Wheel spinning action, high flying jumps, zigzagging excitement that can drive you wild. And Radio Shack's the only place you'll find the Stuart Little Roadster. Radio Shack is gone now, and it's kind of sad. Radio Shack was always there for us. They were a strange store where you could go and buy batteries and all kinds of weird electronic parts, any kind of odd dongle or cable you needed. Odds are they had it. Uh, and they would always ask you for your phone number when you bought anything, no matter what. Wendy's had a tie-in with Stuart Little, so they had Stuart Little toys, including a wind-up car. I mean, come on. It's adorable. He's playing the guitar on a on a comb and he's wearing a tuxedo. It's a mouse in a tuxedo. One of the things I remember about Stuart Little was that it had a pretty good DVD. This was back when DVDs were awesome. They would load them full of all kinds of extra features. I mean, you could like study Stuart Little in a way that no one ever had other than the people that worked on it. It was kind of crazy. Like you'd get all kinds of weird behind the scenes things. The director would talk over the length of the movie, giving you all kinds of little tidbits. I loved it. And they had a pretty good menu. Hello, everyone. I enjoyed re-watching this the other day. Uh, sadly, I missed the window with my son. He's too old to watch it now. He's uh, uninterested. But I enjoyed all by myself, just grown man watching a kid's cartoon. Attention, everybody. This is Stuart. Hello, everyone. Are you all nuts? He's a mouse. They introduced him into their world. Well, that's just about everybody, except for... Oh, Snowbell, rock him right now. Spit him right out. We do not eat family members. It was a lot of fun. It was adorable. If you like adorable, I've got the story, the history of the puppy bowl here. There's a lot of ins and outs to this story. I dug deep to find all the information. Put it up right before the Super Bowl. If you didn't check it out then, today's your day. Go ahead and click on that. Otherwise, YouTube says this is best for you. And either way, I'll be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So I'll see you then.